A home is so much more than the walls that we build around ourselves. It's a place which encompasses our whole lives and gives us a little bit of solace from the crazy world around us. Today we've traveled to Silverton, Oregon to visit a very special tiny house on wheels where some wonderful memories are ready to be made. Hi, Carissa. Hello, welcome. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, you as well. This house is just so beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> what was it that actually inspired the style of this build? Well, I'd been studying tiny houses for a long time uh, and been thinking about it for years and years and just looking at the different styles of all the different tiny houses. This one seemed to work the best for what I wanted and yeah. And you built this place together with your dad, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. We uh, planned it together and we gathered everything and it was this amazing experience. We were close before, but after the build, it was just like, yeah, even closer. So when I was initially introduced to tiny houses, uh, it was really appealing. I had been wanting to do a straw bale build, but this just was much more practical and feasible. And I didn't really have building experience myself, but my dad had a little bit. And so when we decided to go ahead and do this, it was great because my parents kind of came to me and said, hey, we will, give you a loan, you know, you can borrow some money and we'll help you build this if this is something you really want to do. And I had been kind of getting tired of living in the city and was just ready to kind of downsize and settle in and I felt like it was time. And them being able to loan me that money actually made it possible and then having my dad's help. And building this home with my dad has been a really a beautiful experience just to have a project to do together something to build together and there's something about having that camaraderie i guess with my dad that's been really really special and the end result of the build is just magical the materials have all just really blended in this project haven't they they really have it's been quite amazing because we didn't plan for the specific style so much as uh i had a, a overall idea of what I wanted. But as we found the materials, we just discovered that they were all just melding together so well. And it just turned into this beautiful space that I wouldn't want any other way at all. It's exactly how I would have wanted it. <laughs> and the property that this home is sitting on is just beautiful as well. How did you actually come to be here? Well, my parents uh, lived downtown in this little town of Silverton uh, for a while. And then they found this space for sale. And it was just this incredible two and a half acres and they basically said, yeah, move out of Portland, come and park your house here. And it's been the most amazing process of building that relationship with my parents more and more. Being right there, I can go and have coffee with them in the morning and stuff. And, and just being in a space where, you know, I'm surrounded by nature and all these beautiful things. And it's reminding me what is important. And now I can, if I ever do want to, you know, buy a big home and all of that, have a family of my own, I can save up for that and, and not feel the weight of that right now. And I can still travel and, and do what I want at this point. It's great. And the porch that you've built onto the tiny house just adds this really nice outdoor space, doesn't it? I love it. I love making my coffee in the morning and I come and sit in my rocking chair and just, you know, read a book or just be quiet and listen to the birds. And if it's raining, it's fine. I've got this covered space. And what size is this tiny house? This is on an 18 by eight and a half foot trailer. So it's, I don't even know the exact square footage at this point, but it is definitely under 200 square feet. It's about between 160 and 180, I think, somewhere. I really love the way that the wood is offset against the metal siding. Yeah, so just about a month or so ago, we stained this with a dark brown chocolatey kind of stain. I think it goes well. And this actually was funny because I wanted, this was something I wanted initially out of the, right out of the gate. And it actually ended up being one of the more expensive pieces of the house. <laughs> You'd think rusty metal would be cheap, right? But. We got it from a salvage yard and, and it was exactly what I wanted. So I thought, well, I'll splurge a little bit on this piece and it has its own little character. I really like that about it. Well, I would love to have a look inside. Yeah, please come in. Thank you very much. I absolutely love the style of this home. Oh, thank you. Immediately, I can't help but notice all these little woodland creatures <laughs> that you have everywhere. I kind of love all the little, the little critters and the little tchotchkes, the little characters, it makes it feel like home to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this beetle pine is just mm -hmm. gorgeous. 
Yeah, we actually got a really good deal on this. I mean, it kills the trees, so it's kind of a waste product in a way, but I think it's got such a beautiful color to it. And it was my brother's idea actually to do it on this kind of angle here in the corner. And I really like how it feels. It kind of, you know, draws you into the space to the couch and makes you want to kind of sit and snuggle in for a while, I think. I really like that. You can sit and, you know, drink your coffee inside and just stare at the walls and, you know, like how you would be cloud gazing or something like that. You find little pictures and stuff like that and in the different knots and the different flaws, if you want to call them that, I think they're really beautiful. And tell me about the design of the couch. Uh, the couch is actually my grandmother's old dresser. Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh? It had six drawers in it and we cut uh, two of them off and now we've turned it into four. So it's still a little bit tall for a couch. But, uh, but it works. I have a little footstool so that if I'm sitting for a long period of time, my feet don't dangle and fall asleep. <laughs> and you've got a good amount of storage for your books, don't you? I do, yeah. That was one of the main things I wanted to have in the house was a really nice place to store some books and, of course, my little woodland creatures and things like that. This was one of the uh, original design ideas that I had right in the door. I wanted a space to throw my shoes down below and then a spot where I could put cookbooks and reading books and journals and things like that. So, And it's a pretty cold day outside, but mm -hmm. I am lovely and warm in here. You've obviously insulated the space very well. Yeah, actually it's fiberglass. I, I wish I could have gotten something like denim and that kind of thing, but because it was free, I thought, well, I'll do this. But there's no formaldehyde. There's no you know, harsh chemicals in it as far as that goes. So yeah, it's very well insulated. There's rigid insulation in the ceiling and that has worked really well. So the space is just heated with an electric heater? Yeah, it is at this point. I'm actually just heating with this little guy. Um, I used it all last winter and it was fine. It worked great. And what about your power and water hookups, gas, all that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm attached to my parents' power. So I use water from our, we're on a well here and there's actually a spigot just behind my house that I just attach right to. Um, I've got it through a little filtration system. And then um, I have composting toilets, so I don't need septic. And then my stove, my oven and my stovetop is propane. All nice and simple. Yeah. And then speaking of your stove, here is your lovely kitchen. Yeah, this is it. This is the space. It's actually bigger than, than some of the uh, kitchens and apartments that I've lived in before. So yeah, it's, it's great. Lots of worktop space. I've got this little... Um, cutting board right here so there's even more space to work with and I love to bake so I can you know roll out pie crust and stuff like that right here in the space. And then you've got all the appliances? Yeah I've got I had salvaged this sink actually my mom found this I think at an auction and we just kind of shined it up and we just bought new hardware for it and the uh, oven and stove actually I got from the Habitat Restore for a hundred bucks it was already plumbed for propane so we didn't have to do anything at all we just cleaned it up and plugged it in. So we had uh, all the plumbing and stuff like this over here. So I decided to have the bathroom on the end and it just kind of flowed from the sink to the shower kind of space over here. So all of the water is kind of on one side. My dad plumbed in for a flush toilet if I ever wanted to get one or if I ever sold, decided to sell and the people who bought it wanted a flush toilet, but I don't need it right now with the composting toilet. The shower stall, we bought a pan for the bottom uh, but we didn't have one that would fit properly for the height of the space. So we had to make one kind of improvise. The lid glass in the bathroom is striking. It's probably the most excited I was about any of the things that we had in the house. My friend actually made it for me. And he basically said, go and find a window like a sash and just bring it to me and we'll take care of it. And so I went, I found this one and it was all burnt out like it had been in a fire. And he took it home and he cleaned it up and it had this amazing 1910 privacy glass in it. And he utilized it in the design. I told him, I said, do whatever you want. Just greens and blues is kind of what I'm wanting color wise. And this was a design he came up with. He, he thought, you know, put a bird on it and came up with something so beautiful. There's so many things about it. Like the, the green glass is leftover scraps from the Multnomah Whiskey Library. So I, yeah, it's one of my, one of my most favorite, favorite things about the tiny house. And then you've chosen a ladder to access your loft. Yes, actually I wanted to have something that was stationary, something I didn't have to move around a lot and find a place to hook on the wall and things like that. And I know that a lot of tiny houses will have shelving underneath. Uh, and it's really great for storage, but I wanted to be able to see through it to have that visual line through because I felt like it would keep the space feeling more open and a little bit bigger. Did you want to see up in the left? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. 
So yeah, I wanted a nice place to soft spot to land when I came up instead of climbing right into the mattress space. Uh, and so I had this uh, area here and my sister actually had this sheepskin rug. It's actually a really nice spot because I can get up in the morning and do some stretching if I want to, or um, just sit and look out the window for a little while and have a little quiet head space. Absolutely, and you have such a beautiful view out the window. This must be such a nice space to wake up in. Oh my goodness, it's the best. I still pinch myself every morning and just think this can't be real, <laughs> but it is, and, and I love it. I love the space that I get to look out into, and I picked this spot on the property for this view specifically, actually. I wanted to see through the trees into that clearing. Waking up in a space that you've built with your own hands, you must just have such a tremendous sense of accomplishment from that. It's an incredibly uh, empowering feeling. I never thought that I would have been able to do something like this. And now on the other side of it, I still almost am like, I did this, how did this happen? <laughs> a lot of the credit goes to my dad. He really pushed me into it in a really lovely, wonderful, loving way and was right there with me and, and did you know, all that hard work with me and, <laughs> and taught me so much. So I have him to thank for a lot of it. And can I ask you about the cost of this project? Yeah, it is somewhere, I don't have an exact number, but it's somewhere between 18 and 20,000 altogether. So what would you say that your favorite things about this home are? I think probably that it was made by people that I love and that every time I walk in the door, I see that, I remember it. So we had a build day and a bunch of friends and family came. There was like 30 people. And we put up all the framing in one day and it was really amazing. My background, my heritage is like Amish Mennonite. And so one of the guys who was an old college buddy of my dad's actually wrote Amish Tiny House Rising on one of the two by fours that's around the door frame actually. So it's in the walls somewhere there. I actually, I told my parents, I said, I feel like I'm getting married. <laughs> like all these people are here to support me and encourage me and help me build this thing. And just the memories of that and, and feeling so much of the love from the community and the family that helped me build the space. And I think that's, that's probably my most favorite thing about the house. I kind of feel like my house and I have sort of a love story. <laughs> Before it was completely finished, I remember coming in and cleaning it one day, like sweeping up from all the sawdust that was on the floor and stuff. And I had my radio playing and there was this love song on. And it was funny because I started thinking about it as like this love song between my house and me. <laughs> And it's really become a character in my life. It's become a, a really beautiful spot in my heart. And it's been really special that way. Living in this space just feels right. It just feels like home, you know? I, I fit in this space and it was made for me. And, and I feel it every moment that I'm in the house. And it's really, really special. Carissa, this home is just so beautiful. I really can't express enough just how welcoming the space feels to be in. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. this with me. Thanks for coming. Just as beautiful as this tiny house itself is the story about how it was built. So much more than just nails and timber went into this space. This was a place that was built by love, family, friendship, and connections. And that is what truly makes this place a home.